So in case you guys haven't noticed, I don't just make videos on architecture anymore. I'm a tech reviewer now. So why are you wearing a hat? Um, cause tech reviewers wear hats. Just the other day, HP reached out and they sent me some sick swag. <laughs> and uh, this kit, it includes the uh, HP Spectre 360 and the HP Envy 7955V printer and the HP U28 monitor. So these actually came at the perfect time because I was already looking for a device that could do multiple things uh, like work and sketch. So yeah, I just figured it'd be a really nice way for me to share my thoughts on convertible laptops. So in this video, I'm gonna share my experience with the uh, 16 inch version of the Spectre X360. I'm gonna talk about the product. I'm gonna talk about the design, ergonomics, specs, uh, a little bit about software compatibility. And I'm also gonna talk about how I've been using it for work because I'm actually just a regular old architect during the day. In the end, I'm going to give my thoughts on whether having a convertible laptop with a pen actually <laughs> helps with my workflow or if it's just a novelty. By the way, this is a sponsored video, but as usual, this is 100% my own personal honest opinion. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Who knows? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dami and I'm a licensed architect in beautiful Vancouver, BC. On this channel, we talk about architecture and design as well as some tools and strategies that can help us have more meaningful and fulfilling careers in architecture. And sometimes that is our tech tools. Let's face it, convertible laptops or touchscreen laptops have been around the market for a while now, but I've never really found them to be that useful. <laughs> um, I actually have a touchscreen laptop for my work computer, but um, I never ever ever use it for that function. And in fact, it's pretty annoying sometimes because like I'd be showing something on my screen and like I would accidentally touch the screen uh, forgetting that it is a touch screen and just like it messes everything up. I think uh, for it to be really useful, um, it actually comes down to the design as well as the ergonomics. I'm not saying design sells, but it really does. So these things are meant to solve two problems at the same time, the spontaneity and the portability of a tablet uh, with the functionality and the workability of a full-size laptop. But does it really do that? The HP Spectre X360 has a pretty spacious 16 inch IPS 3K monitor with a resolution of 3072 by 1920. I think the monitor is actually really good. Um, it's got some really great colors. The brightness and the whites are really well balanced and the resolution is really good. Um, and it's good enough to work with most of the apps that I use pretty much uh, on a daily basis. The resolution is definitely a big factor for me because I work a lot with apps like Rhino, Revit, or Enscape. The keyboard is really comfortable and the keys are very nice to type on actually, um, even for very long sessions. If you're a night typer like me, um, rest assured it's backlit as well. The keys have a nice clicking sound, which I like because I can type really fast and make it seem like I'm working really hard. <laughs> Just kidding. There's also a fingerprint reader on the lower side of the keyboard, but the main feature of this tablet is definitely the uh, three 360 hinge, which uh, lets you work in full tablet mode. And uh, you can use the body of the laptop as a stand for both vertical and horizontal configurations. And like our phones, the uh, internal gyroscope adjusts the screen according to the orientation. So you can use it when you're sketching or typing or presenting or watching YouTube, uh, which I definitely don't do at work. And when you rotate a 360 and you're using it like an iPad, the keyboard locks automatically to avoid any unwanted typing. And if you wanna put it down when it's in tablet mode, there's these little plastic feet that's gonna keep your tablet level. The Spectre body is made out of metal and it feels pretty sturdy and premium, but because of that, it is a little heavy and it's uh, not as lightweight um, like other tablets. It comes with a pen, so you can draw and you can sketch, you can take notes, and you can also do this, or you can also do this, and you can also do this. 
And actually, I love using this pen because it's got a pressure sensitivity and a magnetic docking system. So you can put it on the side of the screen. On the side over here, there's two additional buttons for shortcuts, like the eraser tool and quick access to the contextual menu. To charge the pen, you do need to use a USB-C cable, but the battery lasts for a pretty long time, for a whole 30 days without charging. And when it's out of battery, there's a little light indicator that's gonna tell you if you need more juice. I'd love to see an option where you can charge the pen wirelessly or maybe uh, changing the location of the port so that you can dock it more steadily while it's connected to a cable. Connectivity has been a pretty sensitive topic for me because it seems like every new laptop out there is trying to get rid of as much ports as possible to make it slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. I understand, <laughs> like we're trying to push for the wireless future, but like as a person working in architecture, which uh, first of all is very, very slow moving. And uh, second of all, like freaking requires so much transfer of data between people. It's been a little frustrating to have to connect to a dongle whenever I wanna like connect to a screen or to a USB key. For me, it's a really simple thing, but it just drives me a little bit crazy. So I was quite happy to find that this thing's got a sensible amount of ports. On the left side, there's one full-size USB type A port, which I find super useful because honestly, the vast majority of the hard drives still rely on USB ports. This is a nice little detail here. The port's got a small retractable angle, which makes it less noticeable and it helps smooth out the edges of the laptop. Right next to the USB port, there is a, ta-da, a full size HDMI connector. <laughs> Again, super pleasant surprise for me because uh, very often um, in order for me to connect my laptop to a screen or a projector, um, I have to carry around a dongle every single time. And it's been super, super annoying for me. And um, having a dedicated port just gives you that peace of mind that it's gonna connect most places I go, and it's like one less thing I have to worry about. On the right side, there's a USB type C port, and there's a power connector, and it has a micro SD card reader. This just makes the whole process of offloading footage a lot faster, especially when you're on the go. Um, I would have preferred a regular SD card reader since I use uh, mostly a uh, Sony DSLR camera, maybe next time HP. What's also interesting is these two additional ports on the edges of the laptop. A 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the left side and additional USB Type-C port on the right side. If you need to connect multiple monitors, there's good news. Since the USB-C ports are rated Thunderbolt 4, you can connect up to two 4K displays. And what's better than having one screen? Two screens. For me, having a second screen is a must, whether I'm doing video editing or working on Revit. Um, it's just a drastic improvement to my workflow. So it's like a no brainer. Here you can see the laptop connected to the HP U28 monitor that I'm currently using as a secondary monitor. It's got a 27 inch IPS display and has a visa mount and lots of connectivity, including USB-C. The full HD camera is right at the top of the screen and it's got an intelligent focus tracking feature and it performs really well in low light. I was personally really impressed with how it handles your skin tones. Since you can use the hinge to fold the laptop completely, you can take advantage of the five megapixel photo camera to scan documents and even take high quality photos. For privacy, it's got a, a physical shutter button that closes the camera completely by pressing this button. All right, you nerds, let's get into some numbers. The version that I'm using right now is equipped with Intel Core i7 11390H and Integrated Graphics XC. It's a four core CPU running up to five gigahertz on Turbo Boost. The CPU is not the fastest on the market, 
but it has pretty good thermals. And thanks to the Iris XC integrated GPU, it performs really well on uh, most graphic applications. In fact, the integrated GPU performance is on par with dedicated graphics card like the NVIDIA GTX 1060 Ti. But since you have all the components integrated into one SOC, the battery life goes well beyond eight hours. And depending on what kind of tasks you're doing, um, it could reach uh, up to 14 to 16 hours. So unless you're looking for a mobile rendering machine, this chipset is capable of running all the apps that you need, including ArchiCAD, Revit, Rhino, etc., and even doing some light work on video editing applications. In terms of software, uh, first and foremost, this machine runs on the new Windows 11, which is good news for architects because um, it really means all the major software, including Revit, runs smoothly on this machine without any emulation. And of course, as an architect and as a creative professional, taking notes and drawing on documents is part of my daily routine. And I do really like how this laptop lets me switch pretty seamlessly between these apps. Sketching and taking notes on such a large display is pretty great. <laughs> Even the largest tablet on the market doesn't go beyond 12 or 13 inches. So this 16 inch screen is kind of a game changer. Since the Spectre X360 is running on Windows 11, you can choose over hundreds of sketching software. The best part is you're not just limited to a dedicated tablet app like Procreate, you can actually use the pen even with tools like Photoshop and Illustrator or any other app running on Windows 11. The laptop comes with a free version of Concepts, but you can actually use any other sketching app like Fresco, Krita, Sketchbook, and more. If you want me to do a video where I test out all the sketching apps and compare the prices and the performance, uh, let me know down in the comments. I think this is great, especially for students, because um, it just reduces the amount of stuff you have to carry. I remember having to take around an enormous amount of printouts and notebooks when I was in school. But with this, you can take notes, you can highlight the text, and you can keep all your notes organized. You know, one of the reasons I'm so sure is because I had to carry around so many freaking books when I was in architecture school on top of my laptop. Only if I had this, I would have been like two inches taller. I did take some time to test all the industry standard architecture software like Revit, AutoCAD, Rhino, SketchUp, Grasshopper. They all work without problems. If you want a dedicated video for, this, uh, for these architecture software, just let me know in the comments. There is, of course, an active cooling fan base system that turns on when the CPU is performing heavy loads, and it's very discreet compared to other laptops I've used. If you need to transfer photos or other documents from your phone, uh, this laptop comes with a HP quick drop feature, which will let you transfer files between devices wirelessly. One of the most common ways I use this tablet is to do markups. We're constantly marking up our own drawings or our consultant's drawings. And before uh, we would have to print out like so much paper. And I used to always feel so bad about that because we just mark it up, use it and we just throw it away. But now I mark it up here and I just save it as a PDF. The other great thing is when you're on a site visit, I used to carry around drawings and mark up the drawings, but uh, I mean, that's bulky first of all, and you can't really zoom in and out. And when you're moving so quickly through your site review, uh, your drawings can get really messy and some of the information can get lost if you don't remember to keep track of it properly. One of the downsides is that it is quite heavy, especially for a small person like me. It's a little too heavy for it to be like as portable as a tablet. And one of the things I wish it had was a camera on the back, because something that I do um, very often, especially when I'm on site, is take a photo, uh, write notes directly on that photo, and you can't really do that with this. I think this is definitely more of a laptop with drawing capabilities rather than a tablet with laptop capabilities, if you know what I mean. Tablet for me has very distinct functionalities and use that help my day-to-day -day functions as an architect. And although this does 
do that. Not having a camera function is kind of a downside for me. Talking about wireless connectivity, we also tried the HP NV7955E color printer, and it's a printer, scanner, and copier that lets you print from any device wirelessly. The setup was super easy and it took less than three minutes uh, with the HP smart app. And there's no need for cables, uh, which means you can place the printer pretty much anywhere you want. The quality of the prints are amazing. And there is a dedicated drawer, dedicated drawer, 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 for loading multiple types of regular and photo paper. It has a LCD touchscreen that makes navigating this thing very easy. And I haven't wanted to break this printer yet, which is a good thing because I have wanted to break many printers in my life. Even though we work mostly digitally, whenever we have meetings or design reviews, we always print. And I do it in my own design process as well because I find that being able to lay things out on the table is a great way for visualizing things and it just helps you see things differently. My home workspace is full of inspiration images of things I'm working on. Like if I see something that I like, I save it and I print it out. I find that the process of manually aligning it and processing elements is a really good way to let your brain analyze and like interpret it in a very logical fashion. Sometimes I just want to turn off my computer and just use these. It is nice to create some level of separation from the computer. Personally, the most common method I use the tablet is when I'm drawing over things. So for example, I would find a photo online or I would take a photo um, on site and I sketch over it. And so yeah, the printer and the tablet, they work pretty well together. Please make sure you use fully recycled paper. We can't really afford to waste paper and um, I'll leave some links in the description for some good quality, uh, fully recyclable paper options. HP also has a program called Instant Ink, where you can get a new ink cartridge based on your actual consumption. The printer is a smart printer and it knows exactly when it's running out of ink. So it'll go ahead and order the ink for you uh, when you're running out. HP will also take care of recycling your old cartridges and they use the plastic to produce new printers. So overall, I think a convertible laptop is a great tool for architects and architecture students. Being able to sketch, mark up drawings and use it as a laptop, it really improves your workflow and it can really save you time. You know, there's a reason trace paper is the most commonly used tool for an architect because it allows you to sketch over a massing or image that's already been created. And this is such a big part of most architects design process. And this device basically lets you do that without having to print out your drawings. So that's probably one of the most important real life uses for this machine. I do most of my rendering on the cloud now, um, or we outsource it. So rendering horsepower is not really a major concern for me. If it's not for you either, I think the HP Spectre Earth X360 is a really good all rounder that you can take into consideration. Your laptop will be, of course, your main point of reference for research and creative work and, and having a flexible device that can adapt to multiple situations, I think is pretty essential. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Let me know your thoughts about convertible laptops. And lastly, if you have any suggestions on laptops or tech that you want me to look at, just leave it in the comments. I will look into that. Remember to like and subscribe to watch more architecture content like my video series about my thesis journey or how I found my research topics. I also have a monthly newsletter where I share insights and some tips and tricks. So if you want to stay updated, I'll leave the link in the description. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.